If you like to catch an eight foot giant brown trout with a fly rod, so would I. But I couldn't find an eight foot giant brown trout swimming around in the lake anywhere, so I had to write a book about it. I wrote a book called The Dream Catch, and it's about a group of young people who go to the Northwest Territory. <laughs> Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, you're Hollywood. What are you doing? I'm in the middle of a film. Yeah. What are you doing? Huh? You want to be in the... Can I start all over? Huh? Okay. All right. Sit down. Sit down. There you go. Sit down. Okay. Okay. We'll start all over. Would you like to catch a... Eight foot giant brown trout on a fly rod? So would I. But I couldn't find one swimming around in the lake anywhere, so I had to write a book about it. My book is called The Dream Catch, and it's available for $4 from www.mobipocket.com. That's M O B I P O C K E T.com. The book is about a group of young people who go to the Northwest Territories in search of a legendary giant brown trout. And I'd like to read an excerpt from the book, from chapter 9. And this chapter is about um, their first encounter with this eight-foot giant brown trout. <clears throat> then, in an instant, the line went tight, tight as bowstring. And Aldous gripped the rod with both hands. The rod bent double, straight down. And Aldous let out a grunt as the force of the rod propelled his 165-pound body skyward. The tremendous force of the rod tip going down had catapulted Aldous into the air right off the front of the canoe. He was suspended ten feet high, his back arched and his head curved backwards. He appeared to Chris and Susan, who were watching all of this with wonder from the other canoe, as if Aldous was competing in the Olympic pole vaulting championships. Susan said later that he had perfect form and that he had missed his calling. Paul had to think fast. Alice was too high for a safe landing in the canoe. He appeared to be coming down on his back. So Paul gave a quick back paddle on his right side, which swung the bow of the canoe to the right so that Alice could drop harmlessly into the water, better cold than broken. Alice dropped into the water and disappeared. Paul brought the boat up to the place where he had landed but couldn't see him. Where is he, Paul? Susan called from the ship from the from her canoe. I don't see him. Where did he go? The water is very clear here. He couldn't have disappeared. Then Kathy, who was watching all this from shore and becoming horrified rather than excited, started to shout and point up the lake. There he is, over there. Good grief, Aldous. Let go. Just let the rod go. Paul was screaming, but Aldous would never hear him. He was too far away by now. So Paul started to paddle. The fish was dragging Aldous up the lake, and the water was too cold for a long swim. Susan and Chris were now paddling in unison, powering their canoe fa forward faster than Paul could paddle his. Look, Aldous is up! Susan couldn't believe what she was seeing. Aldous had turned his body around, putting his feet forward and his toes up near the surface, and now he was effectively barefoot water skiing, towed by a huge fish which they had yet to see. Go, Aldous! Ride him, cowboy! Kathy was screaming from the beach. Aldous circled one hand over his head. Yeehaw! Whoopee! And that's from chapter 9, and I hope uh, you found that interesting. And if you did, go to www.mobypocket.com and you can download The Dream Catch. That's the title of the book. Um, for four dollars. Thank you very much. I, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoy the book. Have a nice day. Okay, Hollywood. Get down. Get down, Hollywood.